Hello and welcome everyone to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'm going to go over my <laughs> summer TBR, which is mostly actually an MBR, and I want you all actually to help me if you can maybe figure out what I want the, my TBR to be for July and August. <laughs> So for those who are unaware, I only have one book on my TBR each month. So for example, as I'm recording this, it is June, and so my book for this month is Our Lady of Darkness by Fritz Leiber. I'm already almost done with it, actually, um, but I haven't figured out what I want the book to be for July and what the book I want to be for August, and those are constituting the three summer months. Now they have to be standalones, um, so I'll go over in a minute kind of some standalones I've thought about uh, maybe reading for buddy reads or buddy read purposes essentially i'll I'll, uh, I'll get into that in a second but otherwise i wanted to go over the other books i was thinking about um reading or hoping to read really hoping to read um so we have spellfire by ed greenwood it's the book the first book in the central saga, uh, saga. It's, a, it's a trilogy it's the forgotten realms trilogy it is the first forgotten realms novel released by ed greenwood so it came out in like 87 88 something like that it's really early and then Dune Messiah, which was on my last MBR for spring. So I didn't read it. I still have it sitting out. Planning on reading it at some point. It's really short. I mean, it wouldn't take me that long to read. I don't think I, I read Dune in a couple days. So uh, I don't know what I'm doing with that. And then Childhood's End, which is actually one of the things I'm thinking about making uh, one of the buddy reads for July and August. Um, the other one I'm thinking about, but I don't have a copy of, is The City and the Stars. Those are both by... Um, Wow, I'm totally blanking on his name. Arthur C. Clarke, that's his name. Uh, that guy, gold, you know, golden age sci-fi author. Um, and those are both standalones, of course. And then I'm thinking of, of potentially reading the Leah Ness um, books by Jack Vance. It's a trilogy. Um, the series is called Leah Ness. I'm blanking all, all the names. It's his Arthurian trilogy. So I just finished his Dying Earth books recently. And I was thinking, you know, maybe I'd like to read uh, Leah Ness next. Uh, I do have a few other books by him, but that'll probably be it. That's probably the one I'll read next, rather. Um, I want to read The Vanishing Tower by Michael Moorcock. Um, just, it's the next Elric book. It's the fifth one, uh, if you're reading it in that order. I think it's the fourth if you're going with, like, the old Daw releases. So I have that. I need to read it. Um, and then Averone. I have a collection of short stories uh, by Clark Ashton Smith, the Averone um, set. I've read a decent amount of poems already in it. Um, and I've only, but I've only read one of the short stories, so I have to read that. It's not actually very long. Uh, it's just mostly short stories and poems. And then Eldros Legacy, actually, which I have right here. So I might make a video on this um, world at some point, but I've already read this one. So that was that made it on my MBR, but I already read it in June. The review will be out probably in July, though. I'm so far ahead of my videos. I am almost done with this one. I got a couple chapters left. So see the Dominion. Uh, there. Those are by two different authors. They're two different series, technically, just in a shared world. So this is the next one. Was it Deadly Fortune? Yeah. And then this one, The Door into Winter, which, if hard to be honest, is the one I'm looking forward to the most. I haven't read anything by Rob Howe, but he seems like he's got similar interest to me. It's also the thickest Eldros Legacy one. By the time this video comes out, though, there will probably be the fifth Eldros Legacy book out. Um, that's Laurel the Dark. It's actually a sequel to this first one, Kaivin the Unkillable. Um, so as far as physical books, I'm grabbing off the shelf here for... Uh, my MBR. Then I want to read Sifei Queen, book eight of the Spiral Wars. I'm trying to make this short for y'all. Um, really looking forward to it. Um, I think that series is supposed to be 10 books. It probably will be two plus years until it's finished because he comes out with one a year normally. But he has written 10 other books. He wrote six Cassandra Krasnov books and four fantasy books. I don't remember what the name of that series is. Sasha's book one. Um, so I might read those. I, I'm really particularly interested in this uh, Cassandra Krasnov series. Definitely, uh, it's, uh, as far as I'm aware, like a cyberpunk sci-fi, um, which I haven't really read much of. I've read books that are kind of cyberpunkish. They have some cyberpunk elements in them, but maybe I should read Neuromancer first. But I really like Joel Shepard. I mean, I've read seven books by him, so he's up there with authors I've read most books by. And then Memories of Ice by Steven Erickson, book three of Malaz and Book of Fallen. This will definitely happen at some point, or I I hope I hope it happens. Uh, the only thing that will keep me back from reading that is that it's slow. I don't read this nearly as quickly as I would like to, and so that might keep me putting it off for a little bit. 
Um, and then Nightside the Long Sun, uh, book one in the Book of the Long Sun. If I do read Nightside Long Sun and if I do it relatively soon, then I would probably like to um, read at least book two as well, which is The Lake of the Long Sun. But I recently finished Earth. I finished Earth um, in the, in the, near the end of May, and I read Citadel of the Autark, I think at the end of March, maybe the beginning of April, so not super far apart on those. Um, I'm, Gene Wolfe is an author I love now, so I'm going to try to get to more of his works. And I do have a couple more, actually. Um, but and some of them are standalones, so that's what I'm going to get into now. So again, like I mentioned, I read standalones. So I just want to mention a list of them that if any of these sound interesting, because I really like reading standalones and I want, what I'd really like is to have a discussion with someone over these books. Uh, I know that's partially my fault because I like, for example, I, I was supposed to have a discussion with Jonathan for words in time on House of Sons and I just didn't try to schedule anything with him. I still could, I guess, Jonathan, if you're watching this. I just, I'm just, I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess I didn't have as much to say about it as I thought I might. Um, but whatever. I don't know. So um, we have The Symbol's Gift. This is by Lynn Abbey. It is a uh, Forgotten Realms novel. It's a standalone. I have been wanting to read more Abbey. She is definitely an author I have enjoyed. Um, and I just think I should experience more of her writing at this point. So and then Evermeet is another standalone Forgotten Realms novel by Elaine Cunningham. This one is about elves. Uh, I hear really good things. Um, so if elves and Forgotten Realms sounds interesting to you, maybe that would be good. The Gilded Rune is the same thing, except for it's written by Lisa Smedman, who is a really good author. It's someone I've read actual novels for before. Really enjoy. Um, but this one's about dwarves. <laughs> so, and then there's The Golden Key, which is by Melanie Ron, Kate Elliott, Jennifer Roberson, I think. It's by three female authors, um, and it's a big standalone. It's got this Michael Whalen cover. I have it over there. Um, thick standalone um, by three authors. I read a little bit of Kate Elliott. I haven't read anything by Ron or Roberson, and those are... I, I'm trying to read more by female authors. I'm kind of... I'm tempted to make a video on this, too. Uh, so I th I've had this book on my list for a while. I've had the book for a while. So if anyone thinks... The Golden Key sounds interesting, then maybe we could read The Golden Key one of these months. Then Implied Spaces this is by Walter John Williams, I think is his name. Uh, this is a standalone, again, it's like a sci-fi, but I think it gives off um, uh, fantasy vibes, or at least starts with a fantasy setting. I believe it's actually set in a Dyson sphere that's being simulated through a matryoshka brain. I think that's what it's going on here. Any big sci-fi guys probably know what I'm talking about. I don't really know what I'm talking about. The Wheel of the Infinite is what I want my introduction to be to Martha Wells, who's known for her Murderbot series. I'm not that interested in Murderbot. Maybe I'll get there eventually. Um, as far as I'm, I, from what I've heard, I don't think I'd like it as much as I'd like some of her older stuff that's less popular. And The Wheel of the Infinite is one I've had for a while. It's a standalone, it's not too long. Um, I have it over there. <laughs> That's why I'm looking over there. <laughs> so, uh, but I'd like to get to that one. If anyone's interested in reading The Wheel of the Infinite, reading some of uh, Wells' fantasy, her earlier works, uh, then I hear really good things about that one um, from both the library ladder, but originally Kevin, if you know Kevin, you know, the one and only Kevin, he recommended that one to me actually too. Or actually he didn't actually. I, I got a copy like right when he was reading it, some weird, weird like twist of fate, you know, because he only reads book like half a day. No, I'm just joking. Uh, he reads books really fast. That's what he's known for. Anyways, uh, then Runes of Autumn. This one is actually pretty interesting because it's written by Larry Elmore, the famous fantasy artist, um, and and his cousin. It's some other Elmore on there too. I don't remember. It is a standalone. I have no clue if it's very good, but I got it. I was like, hey, I want to read a book by Larry Elmore. Funnily, after that, I found out Brom, an another famous artist, also writes books. His are more of a, on a horror bent. I'll probably get to Brom eventually, but Runes of Autumn is standalone. And then Conan and the Emerald Lotus. This is a book I have on this bottom shelf down here, actually. I have a second copy. I, I've, if I ever do a giveaway for my channel, which I'm just lazy, I guess, so far, uh, it'll probably be that trade paperback of the Conan and Emerald Lotus because they're both kind of hard to come by. I, I hear amazing things. I hear it's one of the best pastiche Conans. Um, I'm totally blanking on the guy's name right now. You can talk to him on some of the Discord servers. John C. Hawking. He is a still active modern sword and sorcery author. He writes a lot um, for like uh, Magicians and Skull Magazine. And Dark Moon by David Gemmel uh, is another one I want to read. It's one of the standalones I have by Gemmel. Big fan of his Jornai books. So but that sounds interesting to anyone. Dark Moon, uh, Gemmel. I need to read another Gemmel anyways. So uh, The Black Faint, Flame and the Blue Star 
they're not by the same author. I can't remember who wrote them. They're both over there by my doll books. They're not doll books, I don't think, though. <laughs> um, and uh, they're both appendix in books. So Gary Gygax mentioned them, but I hear like no one really talk about those two. So I haven't read them so far. If anyone wants to do an appendix in read, I'm pretty sure these are both standalones. I can't remember who wrote either of them, but I have copies of both of them. And then Road Marks by Rogers Lasney. Uh, one of the few standalones I have of him, I didn't put it on this list, but Jack of Shadows also, which I hear is a big influence on the Rogue class in D&D. Road Marks, though, my buddy Tim uh, Rinfail, uh, is, I think it's his favorite novel by Zelazny. I think Zelazny is like one of his favorite authors, if not his favorite, uh, you know. So uh, Road Marks is an interesting one. It's really short, uh, like a lot of old school, you know, books, like especially by like Zelazny and other authors are. And then Sometime Lofty Towers, this one's newer. Oh, I think it's a David C. Smith. I'm, I could, that could be totally the wrong author. Um, I think it's from Pulp Press. Oh my goodness, I'm blanking. I have it over there. It's a newer, uh, It's I hear it's lo Literary Sword and Sorcery, which has been one I've been meaning to get to. Um, but I don't hear enough about it. That's, that's funny how like my, my reading goes. Like if I'm getting reminded enough of it and like it's good stuff that I'm hearing about it, that I'll get to it quicker. And uh, I don't hear a lot of people talk about it because that scene, the, mo the present modern sword and sorcery scene is very small. <laughs> so someone pump up sometime Lafty Towers and I'll get to it sooner. I mean, I have a copy of it and it's not very long. It's not long at all. So, and then uh, Childhood Inn, which I mentioned before, sort of Rionin, which doesn't have an ebook or an audiobook, so that was kind of hard to suggest, but classic, uh, I think 40s, maybe 50s, uh, Sword and Planet by Lee Brackett, who is another author I've been wanting to try. Um, and then Conjure Wife, The Wanderer, The Big Time, and The Green Millennium, all four books by Fritz Leiber that are standalones. Actually, Big Time, I imagine it's a standalone, but it has some other stories that go with it, at least. So Conjure Wife is horror. It came out in the 40s. I think it was actually a rather important horror novel by the time it came out. But Leiber's one of those authors that was insanely influential and insanely, like, popular. I mean, he's a grandmaster sci-fi. There's like only a few of those. Um, and he is one of the masters of sword and sorcery. All right. And like the guy is a legend. Okay. And like almost no one knows about him these days. It's, it is a crime in my opinion, if you're a fantasy fan or sci-fi fan or a horror fan, not to know who Fritz Leiber is. Anyways, he's become one of my favorites. So I'm obviously a little biased, but in the past year alone, I've read like seven novels by him, uh, which is more than any other author I can think of. So, um, and then to ride Hell's Chasm. This is a recent addition to the list, uh, thanks to Joanna mostly, but she read it with Philip, Dr. Philip Chase, uh, someone else too. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember who read it all. Uh, but apparently it's Standalone by Janie Wirtz, another author again who I've been wanting to try uh, Standalone. So it seems interesting. Um, Peace and then Operation Aries as well by Gene Wolfe. Um, I don't know if there's audiobooks for either of those. I hear Peace is his best novel. Um, and Operation Aries, that I hear, is his worst novel. <laughs> uh, Operation Aries was his first novel. It's actually out of print, so it's relatively hard to find. Um, but if anyone wants to read either of those, any of those, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure something out. But I, I, a lot of times, I don't even go based on what people want. I just, I just pick something, you know, off the my mind a few weeks beforehand. But I'd like to, if I could, because I know in about a week will be a few weeks before July, anyways. Um, but I'd really like to be able to get something picked out for August too, so I can plan something with someone and maybe not just plan that, but plan like a discussion or maybe even a live discussion with some other people. Cause I've only ever been on one live thing and I was with uh, T and he hosted it on Air and his channel on Eridite Adventure uh, and Owen was there as well. That's the only live thing I've ever been on. <laughs> um, and I want to just do more discussions anyways. That was one of my goals for this year with the channel. So, but anyways, that was, that is my MBR basically like there's, I almost certainly will read very, very few of those. I, I think I'll read all of the ones I mentioned before I get to the standalones, help me pick my TBR type of thing going on. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll title this probably something like my TV, my summer TBR slash NBR, and then help me pick some. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, it's been Liam Liam's Life Team. If you want to join along, you can discuss down below in the comments, but also I do have a Discord now and you, I'll link that and you can come and chats it's mostly dead in there a lot of times uh, i'm not a very exciting person i guess so but uh, I'll, I'll catch you next time